to the Lord our God, amen, in prayer and seek an individual answer based off the scriptures and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Do not rely on man, meaning humans. Now, right here I did a cutout and I put the link here from DuckDuckGo for the many offerings and some of these clips and cutouts that are in there that I didn't put together, there other people put them together, so you have to pray before you look and ask God to guide you to the correct one. Each offering, each sacrifice, hallelujah, each service, each feast, they all lead to Jesus. Amen. Everything leads to Jesus. I love my Lord. So I believe when we don't observe and remember and keep these feasts, we are denying Jesus. We are denying God being our creator if we don't observe and keep the Sabbath, for God rested on the Sabbath. We are denying those 6,000 years before the seventh day, the 7,000 year when God rested, when God created everything in the heavens and the earth and on the land and separated the waters and imparted everything, made the land and, and everything in the heavens above and the waters below and everything in between. I believe if we do not keep the Passover, we are not observing and remembering and believing that God set our ancestors, for lack of a better word, but with the outstretched hand from setting them free from enslavement in Egypt. I believe if we don't observe the tabernacles and booths, we're not remembering that they were wandering the desert and that they were out there for those times in those years before they got to go into the promised land. I believe that if we don't celebrate Rosh Hashanah, the biblical new year, we aren't celebrating and remembering that there is a book of life for it is written in the Bible. And, and one day we're hoping that that book of life, it opens up our name is in it and we'll have eternal life. And we're praying that we we have truly loved our Savior according to God's word and accepted him fully in our lives. And we lived a life that Jesus, that was worthy of the sacrifice of our Jesus. So when Jesus opens the Lamb's book, our name is written in that book as well. I believe when we don't keep the day of atonement and we repent of our sins, like the Lord our God said forever unto your next generations, thou shalt do. I am the Lord our God, I do not change. I believe we are denying, amen, that God has called us to repent of our sins and turn away from our sins and turn our face towards Him. And if we do not do this, we are making ourselves enemy of the Lord our God. This is what I believe. Now others may not believe this, and this is what I say, go and ask God. But I will say this, let's say, let's say, each and every word of the Bible is true. And each and every word of the Bible was inspired by the Lord our God, given to His servants to write and transcribe for us in later generations. And let's say, like many of the Jewish religions believe, that Jesus does return on the Day of Atonement, right? There's going to be a couple of groups of people on that day. The faithful will be at home repenting to the Lord our God. Amen. The unfaithful will not be. I'm not saying they don't love Jesus. I'm just saying they're not faithful in observing the feast. Okay. They'll be out living as in the days of Noah, giving into marriage and marrying and partying and celebrating, celebrating drinking and buying houses, driving fast cars, not living wickedly, just living life, you know, being free. Then there will be those who do not believe and you know what non-believers do the most, <laughs> the most of any and everything, they'll be doing that. My next question is, it's the day of atonement. What group do you want to be in? I'll tell you what group I want to be in. I want to be in the group that is at home 
fasting and praying and repenting of my sins and reading the word of God and and telling God how grateful I am for him and I'm, I'm so sorry for ever breaking his heart forever doing things that caused him to feel shame towards me or be embarrassed of me for forever having to get angry with me because the only reason why God would get angry with me is because I've sinned and gone against him. I would pray and repent on my behalf, on my brothers and sisters' behalf, on my nation's behalf. This is what we're called to do. And if there's any Christian out there that believes, maybe in a little bit that I do, and maybe God is calling you to start observing these biblical feasts, why not pray to the Lord our God? Let's say you're like me and you didn't grow up observing biblical feasts. You have no idea even where to start, right? Why not ask God to give you a book, send you a book, send you a video, send you a guidance and ask him how and when to observe these biblical feasts. That's, that's, that's the bare minimum. If you ask God and you seek the Lord our God, Amen. He will give you the desires of your heart. That includes truth and knowledge and wisdom and how to serve him and where to find sources to help you learn how to serve him. Amen. In Jesus name. I pray God says other individuals wise, 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 wise. <laughs> Solomon wise, Jesus wise, amen. Moses wise, leaders to help them learn. Me personally, how did I learn? I prayed and asked God and I believe God directed me to a book. I'm not paid to endorse, nor am I affiliated. I don't receive any kickbacks or offerings or whatever, but it's honestly a book that I have and I've shared it before. Martha Zimmerman, Biblical Feasts, the, it's observing the biblical feast from a Christian point of view. That's what I use. It even has recipe ideas. So I believe that book makes it very easy. Martha Zimmerman, observing the biblical feast of the Bible. Martha Zimmerman. And I always suggest that book to others. I share that book with others. I honestly pray that I go to a bookstore and find copies of that book so I can give it out to others that are asking. Um, that's how I learned to observe the biblical feast. Of course, praying and learning from Jesus himself. Amen. Amen. In Jesus name. All right, let's carry on. Verses 15 through 16. Mm, tea tastes so good. Numbers chapter 15. And if a stranger so journey with you. Now strangers, we went over this, right? Don't vex a stranger for you were once in strangers in the land of Egypt, right? Strangers are those who are new to the faith. So these would be strangers who are um, new to Christianity. Strangers would be someone that's new to the Jewish faith. Those who were, uh, they are, they are brand new baby Christians. Amen. We'll say it that way. The brand new babies and they need some help and they need this guidance. And that means us who are more wisdom filled or more guided in the Lord. Don't be so snooty booty, <laughs> you know, have grace, have mercy in teaching these little babies because we were once drinking that milk too. Amen. There ain't nobody that's a little baby Enoch that I have ever heard of besides Enoch. All right, we weren't jumping out the womb seven months and prophesying. All right, so we need to take a step back when we meet a little baby Christian, meet them where they are at, don't condone their misbehaviors, but don't beat the Holy Spirit out of them that they are trying to learn and grow in. Amen. Don't be so harsh you turn them away from Jesus because of jealousy or begetting or whatever else could possibly happen. Don't be that individual who just <sighs> How do I say this? 
don't be that individual who is a, a stumbling block for someone getting to Christ. Amen? Amen in Jesus' name. Ain't nobody want a stumbling block. All right. If a stranger so journey with you or who's ever been among you in your generations and will make an offering by fire a sweet savor unto the Lord as ye do, so he shall do. One ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation and also for the stranger that dwelleth with you. That means those who are visiting your residence, your establishments. If you are traveling with guests or strangers, guess what? They, you are called to observe the biblical feast. Don't forego observing the biblical feast to make someone else uncomfortable. No, 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 no. Christians, followers of Christ, amen, we stand firm on the rock. That means wherever you are, no matter who's around, if your roots are deep in Christ, you observe the biblical feast. Amen? That means throughout your generations, that means no matter where you go or who you're traveling with or who is visiting your house, your house, your establishment, amen, in business, in finance, in romance, amen, wherever you are, even an ordinance forever in your generations. Now, if anyone could ever tell me when forever ends, then I will believe we are not called to observe the biblical feast. Because even Jesus Christ, our wonderful, merciful Lord and Savior, guess what he did? He observed the biblical feast of the Lord our God. He even observed the Passover, <laughs> right? Amen, blessed lamb. You are, so shall the stranger be before the Lord. Let me read that much more better. The congregation and also for the stranger that dwelleth with you, even an ordinance forever in your generations as you are, so shall the stranger be before the Lord. One law and one manner shall serve both for you and for the stranger that so journey with you. Now, does anyone here but does anyone here these are the exceptions no 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 god says one law in one manner shall serve both for you and for the stranger that so journeyeth with you now if anyone on earth is not on our journey to get from where they started to where they are going go ahead and raise your hand right now go ahead and raise your hand right now i guarantee you there is not anyone on this earth Amen. That is not on some kind of a journey. I don't care what you what you have to say. I don't care if you are a non-believer and you happen to come across this Bible study. I don't care. I'm telling you right now. Can no one say they are not under the law of God? Amen. God created every body. Amen. God created every living thing. For he is the only living God everything even hallelujah even the wind is under the law of god even the rain is under the law of god even our fruits and vegetables <laughs> are under the law of god amen everything god created he set a law for and a covenant for i guarantee you this amen hallelujah jesus can't nothing say can't nobody say, amen, that they will not be held accountable to God's law. They can't say it because, it, they, I mean, they could say it theoretically. It just wouldn't be true. Amen. Amen. Those who commit a sin unknowingly. So the next Bible verses are going to be going over those who commit a sin unknowingly. What happens to those? Because I know some are going to say that. Well, what about the people who don't believe? Or what about the people who were taught incorrectly? Or what about the people? God's got it covered because God knows everything. Amen. He knows that people would make excuses. There's no doubt in my mind. <laughs> so let's read this. Mm. Oh, excuse me, drinking some tea. Numbers chapter 5, verse... 15 why did i put five there chapter 15 verses 17 through 26 
And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land in which I bring to you. Now, God, just the Bible verse before, right, said, Nation of Israel and stranger, both are one, right? So from here on out, when God says a commandment or an order, guess who these laws and orders are for? For the nation of Israel and for the strangers. Stop, stop, because I know someone out there is going to be like, but it doesn't say. Let me go one more line up. One law and one manner shall serve both of you and for the stranger that so journeyeth with you. Thank you. All right. So from here on out, God isn't looking at the nation of Israel and looking at those who are strangers new to the faith. He is looking at everybody under one law. Why? I'll tell you why. Because the nation of Israel done sin, sin, sin so far down 10, 12, 20, 30 times over since God set them free from the land of Egypt with the outstretched righteous right arm that they are no longer spiritually elevated onto the angels. Amen. Now, they are at the level of every other human being, every other race and nation that is upon the earth at this time. And yes, there are other nations around the earth at this time, right? Because remember the sons of Noah and their children, after the flood, they went forth through all the earth and they made their tribes and continued being fruitful and multiplying. So yes, there are other nations around the earth. Now those nations who don't know God, who are out there sinning at this point in time, they're in Alaska, they're in North America, they're in South America, they're in China, wherever they are, amen? England, <laughs> right? Great Britain, all right? All those nations, from right here, this is where Israel, through all their sinning, they are all at the spiritual same level from here on out. So when God says the children of Israel, the nation of Israel, he is addressing everyone in the same like manner because now everyone is under the law because they are all at the same spiritual level. God spoke unto Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye come into the land to which I bring to you, I bring you, then ye shall eat of the bread of the lamb, land, ye shall offer a heaven offering unto ye, Lord, and ye shall offer a cake for the first of your dough for a heaven offering. As a heap offering of the barn, ye, so ye shall lift it up, and first of your dough you shall give it unto the Lord, and he heave offering in your generations and if ye have erred meaning you accidentally or you fell short of the mark and not observe the commandments <clears throat> if you didn't know before you were supposed to observe the commandments and now you know that you're supposed to observe the commandments if you have erred and not observed all these commandments which the Lord our God has spoken unto Moses. So go back and read all the commandments that Moses that God spoke to Moses before this chapter. Because now all of us are required to observe all these commandments. The only commandments we are no longer required to observe are the ones for sacrificing because of Jesus. Amen. The blessed Lamb of our God. Amen. All right. Even all the Lord has commanded by the hand of Moses from the first day that the Lord commanded Moses and henceforward among your generations. And if so be that ought to be committed ignorantly, meaning you didn't know no better, of the congregation, the ecclesia, raise your hand if you are in the ecclesia, the most high ever loving living God. Amen. If you are a follower of our Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus our Christ, go ahead and raise your hand. So that is you. Then all ye congregation shall give a bullock. That's already been given, all right? Our Jesus. For a burnt offering, for a sweet savor unto the Lord, with the meat offering and a drink offering thereunto, according to the manner of the he goats and the sin offering. And the priest, which is Jesus, our high priest, shall make an atonement 
for all the congregation, the ecclesia, go to raise your hand, that is us, of the children of the nation of Israel, those who were born into the nation of Israel and those who were adopted into the nation of Israel, that's all the Christians. And it shall be forgiven of them, why? Because of our Jesus, the high priest of the tabernacle, the savior of the world. For if, for it is in ignorance, meaning you did not know any better. Then they shall bring an offering for an offering made by the fire unto the Lord, and their sin offering before the Lord for their ignorance, meaning they did not know any better. Then it shall be forgiven all the congregation, the ecclesia, for the children of Israel, and the stranger that dwelleth among them, for all the people were in ignorance. Now, did everyone read the last sentence? Then it shall be forgiven unto the congregation of the children of Israel, one, and the stranger that dwelleth among them, for all the people were in ignorance. Now, go ahead and look to your left and look to your right. I guarantee you, there is someone who is a Jew that lives in your town or your city. Marie, I live in a town of population 500. I got you there. I guarantee you this. <laughs> I guarantee you there is someone or of Hebrew or Jewish descent in somewhere in their bloodline that dwelleth among you. <laughs> there ain't no way. For it is written in God's word that God would scatter his people throughout the earth. Amen. Their numbers would be so numerous as the stars and they would not be able to be counted. Hallelujah. Praise God. And that the lands would be blessed because of them. That nations would be blessed because of them. So I know this. God's word is true and God's word is faithful. And somewhere around us, there is someone of Jewish or Hebrew descent. And because of them, our lands are being blessed. And we are the strangers that have been adopted into this family because of our Christ. Because we chose God and we chose Jesus and we are filled with his beautiful Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So if anyone is around among them, for all the people, we are required to follow the commandments of the Lord our God. Because no one can tell me when forever runs out. Amen. Except, 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 except the sacrifices of the animals because we know that our Jesus is the blessed lamb and all of that part was canceled out. Amen and amen. Now, we did do several classes regarding offerings and we covered them during the live Bible studies, uh, during season three, during the book of Leviticus. Um, so those who would like to check it out, the links are here. In the blog post, I did not put them in the description box because I honestly didn't think of it <laughs> until right now. Um, but basically, it's Leviticus chapters 1 through 5 or even 7. Don't quote me on that. But if you go to our season um, 3 playlist on um, YouTube, you'll be able to catch all those classes. My favorite one um, when we were going over those was when God showed us each meaning of the offering and what it stood for prophetically and I believe that was in Viticus chapter 3 don't quote me on that but I thought that was amazing but anyhow for those who would like to go and check it out the links are there in the blog okay so those who sin knowingly or unknowingly are held to a to those who sin even unknowingly, are held to a form of account without repentance. Now, those who sin unknowingly and they are arrogant and refuse um, correction from our Father for their, for the Bible verse says, right? God will stop correcting his children. I'm, I'm paraphrasing it. God will stop correcting his children and once they stop going against him. Amen. I'll have to look up that Bible verse again because God showed it to me and I was like, yes, Lord, I knew it, <laughs> right? And it basically said, um, oh my goodness, I had it written down too. Or I posted it the other night on um, 
what is that? I posted it the other night on uh, on um what do you call it? On our um, our minds.com page, and it basically said that yeah, God will stop correcting His children and turn His face towards them and and reveal to them the truth of the scriptures once they quit sinning and repent, right? But as long as they remain stiff-headed, stiff-necked, and hard-headed. You know, no truth is going to be revealed to them. Why? Mm. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Because the Spirit of God is the Spirit of truth. And God's beautiful, holy, glorious Spirit cannot dwell in a sinful vessel. Can God reveal himself to a sinful vessel? Oh, yes. Like on the road to Damascus. Hallelujah. Saul became Paul. Right? But... It took years after that for the Spirit of God to dwell within Paul. Three years to be exact, right? While he was in the wilderness, Jesus sat with Paul and taught him everything that he knew, right? Um, showed him the kingdom of heaven. So everything that Paul came to know or knew when he went out and started preaching and teaching the gospel and getting kicked out of synagogues and, and in prison and entrapped and all that stuff, Everything he was preaching and teaching came straight from Jesus. Amen? All right. So those who sin even unknowingly are held to a form of account without repentance. Verses 15 through 20, 28 confirm this. But if any person sin through ignorance, then he shall bring a she-goat of a year old for a sin offering. And the priests shall make an atonement for the ignorant person when he sinneth by ignorance before the Lord to make reconcile for him it shall be forgiven and that he is born among the children of Israel and the stranger that dwelleth among them shall have both one law who whoso doeth sin by ignorance now there are, I know it reads difficulty but difficult but there are three groups of individuals god is talking about in in these verses the child from the nation of israel the ones who were originally born the original hebrews the stranger those who were adopted into the nation of israel the christians those who were dwelling in the lands and and so on right so the christians and those who are just non-believers there are one person who just happened to dwell in that area. They see individuals praying or worshiping. So they join in the service. They join in the offering, so to speak. And somehow they are just living wickedly. And, and, but they feel called to repent at that moment. This is who God is talking about here, right? So they still have to make atonement and God still accepts their atonement. Think of it this way. Let's say there's someone who is a drunkard, right? They don't believe in Jesus. They don't want anything to do with God. Maybe they weren't even raised knowing about Jesus. And then they're drunk again because they're a drunkard. And one night they're like, you know, I'm so tired of having my life the way it is. I know there has to be, hallelujah, something better out there for me. And right there at that mo moment, <laughs> hallelujah, our Jesus says, I am that something better for you. I have everything you need. That's who God is talking about right here. The person who sins through ignorance. That drunkard probably grew up in an abusive household or maybe grew up being taught that it's okay to drink like society pushes it's okay to sleep around it's okay to be promiscuous and have multiple sexual partners until you meet the person you're married to and hey and if you don't really like that person you're married to after a while just divorce them and get another who cares yolo you see what i mean if the stranger if a person if someone traveling throughout a land sins by ignorance because they don't know no better and at that very moment, they seek the Lord our God. God will meet them where they are at. If they confess their sins, their sins, amen, will be taken on to Jesus. And then Jesus will make atonement for them because 
Jesus died for the most wicked among us. And if they choose to, from that point on, Jesus will dwell in them, on them, in them, with them, and they will be a child of the living God. They will then become a stranger, a new baby Christian, someone just adopted into the family. Does that make a little bit more sense? God got everyone covered. Hallelujah. God got everyone covered in Jesus' name. Then there's another group. <laughs> they got a lot of groups, this Bible study. But for those who willingly sin and hate Hasem, meaning they hate the Lord our God, we are to cut them off from the community. Oh, yes. Some out there will be like, you have to forgive to be forgiven. Doesn't mean you got to kick it with them. Doesn't mean you got to have them over at your house. Doesn't mean you got to be hanging around them. Just because you work at the same establishment with them. Doesn't mean you got to have lunch break with them. No, 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 no. In Jesus name. People like to make excuses to have these wicked, no good sinners around them. And like, it's okay to just be hanging around with whores and whoremongers, drunken drunkards, brawlers and wallers, loose talkers, gossip, slanderers, banderers. I don't care if they have a sold called appointment in whatever synagogue of Satan where they're going around doing the most dirt possible. They are not supposed to be in the community based off the word of God. And I will show others this. Why? Why? Because of evil spirits, demonic possessions, and evil demonic strongholds come from, that's supposed to be from, come from allowing sinners, wicked, and abominations to dwell and have communion with the righteous. Amen. We have been reading through several Bible studies how it is the serpent, Lucifer, the devil, and Satan's goal to alter the DNA of God's children. These wicked destroyers, these workers of iniquity, these who live a sinful, wicked life, at some point, amen, those who are not wanting to turn from their wicked life, I guarantee you this because it is they have a stronghold demon and those stronghold demons only hide themselves from a righteous person for so long. Amen. Their whole goal is to kill, deceive, lie, and destroy. That is their whole goal, to break Christians down, to make Christians doubt themselves, to make Christians doubt their faith and their relationship with God. We are not to have communion with the wicked. I will say it this way and let's get a Bible verse in here to confirm it, all right? Verses chapter 15, verses 30 through 31. But the person, but the person that doeth alt presumptuously, whether he be born in the land, meaning whether he is a Jew, a Hebrew, whether he is the 10th millionth Christian in his bloodline or a baby Christian, a stranger, he is the same, the same that blasphemeth the Lord. Therefore, that person shall be cut off from among his people because he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his commandment. That person shall be utterly cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him, meaning his iniquity, his sin, his sinful living, his sinful life that he keeps wanting to run back to, man or woman, he is not covered by the blood of the blessed lamb. Why? Because he is willfully, presumptuously sinning and hating God. God's word says this. He hates the Lord. Those who choose to live a wicked, sinful life, they hate God. They hate righteous love. They can't take a positive com uh, compliment. They can't take a good deed without doing something perverse to it or doing something perverse to a nice or kind individual and trying to turn their words around or turn their actions around. These people have demonics living in them and they like it. If they really wanted to resist the devil, he would flee in Jesus' name. But those who don't want to resist the devil, they welcome the devil by continuing to live in sin. 
And instead of rejecting the devil, they reject good. Why? Because darkness, darkness can never comprehend the light. They are confused at us loving God. They are confused at our joyfulness. They are confused at our positivity. They are confused that we do good things, not expecting anything back, not keeping a record, not a reminder chart. They're confused by this because all they know is critical spirits, right? All they know is perverseness. All they know is how to kill, steal, and destroy because they are of their father, the devil. Marie, that sounds so sad. These aren't my words. These are the words of God. But the person that doeth alt presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same blasphemeth the Lord. Therefore, that person shall be cut off from among his people because he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his commandment, that the person shall be utterly cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. Mm. Let's define the word despise as written in the American Heritage Dictionary. Despise, despising, despises. <laughs> To regard with contempt or scorn, despise all cowards and flatterers. To dislike intensely, loathe, despise a frigid wither in January. Hey, January's next month. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Those individuals, God is saying he hates God, those who choose to live in sin. And because they hate God, they hate that the Spirit of God dwells within his children. So they are going to attack his children to try and hurt God. Children of the most high ever loving living God. When God says he shall be cut off from his people, God isn't being hateful or mean. God is protecting us. He does not want us around people who are going to use and despise us and beat us down and try to get us fired from our job, try to ruin our relationships, try to vex and hex our households with free rebuking Yeshua's great name. Those who you can't tell something that God has put a promise and a promise has come through in your life because they just want to put you down. They are so negative and sarcastic. You see what I'm saying? God does not want those murmuring, disgusting, evil, demonic spirits or those who allow themselves to become strongholds and in, in synagogues of Satan just walking around Ugh. Mm -mm -mm. being evil demonic vortexes God doesn't want those people among his children because then they then they shed their evilness and they attempt to pervert and corrupt the DNA of the children of God, as in the days of Noah. Mm -mm -mm. Now, we're going to get into the Sabbath. Amen. The man who did not observe the Sabbath and was stoned. Now, just to recap, God showed us through his Bible verses, right? There are laws for the natural born. Hebrew and Jew. There are laws for the stranger, meaning new Christians, and those who never even heard of the Lord our God. They're all under the same law because he is the only living God. Amen. And there is only one way to the Father, and that is through Jesus. There are a couple of things I noticed about these Bible verses. God says, into the land that the Lord our God is giving us, right? I can't help but wonder what land God is talking about. Because here, or before, in chapter 14, we reviewed how Hassam had ordered the nation of Israel to turn back that this hard-headed, stiff-necked stiff generation would not be entering or be allowed to enter into the promised land. So are these Bible verses prophetic verses? Are there... Are these verses, future verses, future instructions for this generation who have been planted in certain promised lands throughout the earth, certain prosperous lands throughout the earth? Is God saying our future land in heaven, the new Jerusalem? 
Is God speaking about the later tribes that would exist that were scattered due to various transgressions against Hashem? I believe all prophetic verses are possibilities are possible. 38 years total, 40 years, this generation will be wandering, wandering for many years in this desert. But an all knowing, merciful God gave us a miracle to be planted unto certain countries and certain families and certain neighborhoods and certain cities and certain states and certain towns and certain generations to do his will even the strangers even the non-believers even the poor god has called us to do great things in these lands to take care of the widow to take care of the orphan to to give clothes to those who are naked, amen, to feed the hungry. We believers are called to be in support to God's agenda under His authority always. I believe until we reach the promised land, which is the new Jerusalem or paradise, the new earth, when our Christ returns and lifts us up, we're never, never that may be. I'm not a book of revelations expert. I believe God gave us his word as an instructions to follow until the last day. Mm. Let's continue reading. The man found breaking the Sabbath. I believe the man found here may be a spy from a foreign nation. Why do I believe this? Throughout the Bible, to this point, when a man from the nation of Israel was noted in a verse, his name and his tribe's name were referenced or his appointment with the Lord our God. For example, Jephro, right? The father-in-law of Moses, Jephro the man in night. Or um, Moses, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, excuse me. Anytime they would list a person, they would list their tribe, right? So the princes, they would list the name of the prince and their tribe like someone of the tribe of Reuben, someone of the tribe of the Mennonites, someone of the tribe of the Benjaminites. Does that make sense? So the fact that the verses that follow say they found, and he is referenced simply as a man, makes me think he is a stranger, a foreigner, um, that hasn't fully come into accepting the Lord our God is his father. And I believe this, hallelujah, because I feel God is reminding me of a similar Bible verse. The first one to die after God made the commandment of not taking the Lord's name in vain was a Hebrew, right? But he was a half Hebrew, so he was a product of a Hebrew who had a child with a woman who was not a the woman was a Hebrew I'm sorry and the father of that child was not of the Hebrew nation therefore disqualifying that child of the inheritance of the tribe that the mother was under right well that child decided to blaspheme the name of the Lord our God and he was killed well, now we have this. God says up here in the Bible verses how a stranger is now under the same laws of those who are naturally born into the tribe of Israel. And so are those who are just ignorant of the laws. Next, we're going to read about a stranger who is now under the law and chooses to break the Sabbath willingly. Let's read. Numbers chapter 15 verses 32 through 36. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath, and that and they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation. And they put him ward, meaning they locked him up, <laughs> um, for it was not declared what should be done with him. Then the Lord said unto Moses, This man shall die the death. 
and let all the multitude stone him with stones without the host. Okay, let all those who don't have the spirit of the Lord our God in them stone him with the stones. One could read it that way because host means spirit. But it also means without the host. It could also mean let all those outside of the city, meaning there was a section of the city where those who had been willfully sinning, um, they were cast out of the city maybe for a week, you know, seven days or maybe six months or maybe even a year. Um, let all those individuals stone him because they don't have the host of the Lord our God dwelling among them because they are outside furthest from the tabernacle. Or it could mean the whole nation of the Israel shall stone him, including the congregation, including the new converts, including the new strangers. Just don't do it here on the tabernacle land immediately do it outside the city now it could mean these three different references and i found all those three different references in the torah just so we're clear all right let's continue reading and all the congregation brought him without the host and stoned him with stones and he died as the lord had commanded moses hallelujah let me take a sip of tea mm. <sighs> praise god but him without the host. I believe that wording shows that the man was stoned as a judgment, received this judgment for being wicked and having an evil intention towards the nation of Israel. The wording without the host could indicate that this man did not have the spirit of the Lord our God dwelling within him. Perhaps an evil spirit from those nearby tribes that were dwelling or roaming the wilderness, which we went over before, right? Because they were giants living in the land and uh, other evil nations surrounding this nation of Israel. It could have been a spy from the other nations that attacked the nation of Israel later, just out here spying, pretending to observe the Sabbath, you know, trying some infiltration from within and... When Moses goes and asks God, God, what should we do with him? And God says, stone him. It's because of that reason. The next uh, Bible verse we're going to go over are have to deal with tassels on the garments, which we first reviewed um, during the books of, I think, Exodus. Exodus 39 and 40. Yeah, we have the link. So I'll show everyone that next. Tassels or garments are reminders to remember the laws of our Father in Heaven. Now, initially, interesting, fun fact, <laughs> um, when God first talked about putting tassels on garments, it was solely for the priests of the tabernacle. Remember we talked about this? They were to be pomegranates um, out of beaten gold. And as the priests would walk around the tabernacle doing their services and and doing their offerings and so on, doing the prayers, doing the feasts and festivals. Um, these pomegranates, these golden pomegranates that were tassels or knots at the bottom of their priestly garments, they would ring, calling everyone to remember the beautiful commandments of the Lord our God and how God had set them free from the land of Egypt with the outrighteous right stretched arm, right? Amen. So... Righteous, right, right stretched arm. Ah, oh, try saying that 20 times fast. But this is what the tassels were first assigned to. Only the Levitical um, priests from the Aaron, from the Aaron, right, were to wear the tassels. Next, because Israel, as we went over before, had fallen so far spiritually, they are now at the lower level. Sorry to say it this way, but it's true as all the other nations and all the other world and all the other lands now everyone is at the same spiritual level <laughs> right now everyone is going to be ordered by god to wear tassels so that they will remember to follow the commandments of the Lord our God. What? Yes. For so many years, I've been hearing from individuals saying, we're in the new covenant. We don't need to follow the commandments of our Father in heaven because Jesus Christ, faith alone saves. Which I do believe Jesus is our salvation. I'm not saying that he isn't. He absolutely is the only way to our God. And I love our Savior. I love... 
I love Jesus with my whole heart. I love him so much because he has saved. I, I'm going to keep it together. But that doesn't mean we aren't required to follow the laws of the Lord our God. For it's written in the word of God, and many forget this, that our, by our words and our deeds and our acts and our thoughts, we will either be condemned or celebrated. It's written in the Bible. So when others say they're not required to follow the commandments or the biblical feasts or whichever from the Lord or God or ordinances for the God from God because Jesus died and rose from the grave, that makes no sense to me. But let's go over the Bible verse, okay? Is this, it is also important what garments we choose to wear. We are to ensure that our garments, ooh, excuse me, our garments glorify the Lord. Our clothing should be a daily reminder who we serve and who loves us. We don't dress to please religion or religious leaders, no. We should never dress to impress or persuade the world. Um, a lot of lusty spirits do that, right? Jezebel spirit can be male or female because they act animalistically. Ain't no man or woman of God a Jezebel. Those are all animalistic evil demonic spirits, which we rebuke in Yeshua's great name. Those individuals who choose to live in that sin are male and female, which means they act like animals. We should dress daily to glorify the great I am. This clothing or covering includes our spiritual body, and our earthly body for God created and formed them both. Now, I just put that side note in there um, because I do believe we are called to represent the body of Christ appropriately wherever we are. That being said, there are exceptions to where we are in the body of Christ. Shepherds most likely are going to wear shepherd garments while they are shepherding, correct? All right. Same thing. If your job is working in a landfill, I seriously doubt you're going to be wearing some fine point leather shoes and a three-piece suit or ball gown with some four-inch or six-inch high heels. I seriously doubt that. Wherever we are doing whatever occupation we are called to do, we are called to represent it and do our work for the glory of living God. Yes. Amen and amen. Same point. If God has called us to be in a season of Jeremiah where we <laughs> where we are fasting and repenting and we are wearing sackcloth and ashes. God had me wearing sackcloth and ashes for years. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. Fun fact. God had me when I was going through my initial sanctification process, finding where I was in the body of Christ and so on. It seemed like five years, but when I was going over my journal writings, because I've always kept the journals, um, I think it was only two or three years. But anyhow, for two or three years, God had me wearing, <laughs> I think it was like two pairs of pants and five shirts or five pairs of pants and two shirts, one of the two. And they weren't cute by any means at least in my mind they were i was looking rough y'all and it and it was apparent that i was going through um a season <laughs> right anyhow um so god had me wearing those clothes for quite a long time and it wasn't until i started truly giving my life completely over to god where god was like all right marie you're done you're done with that stage. I want you to start dressing nicer. And I was like, where am I going, God? I don't do anything. You know I don't like to do anything. I just want to be with you. And God was like, no, no, no. You need to start dressing up. That's the way I understood it. So that began a couple of years ago. And I realized now looking back how God was, it was that whole humbling season so that I could remove all the false teachings and evil spirits and strongholds and healing could take place once I removed all, once I removed all of those through Jesus Christ our Lord. Does, does that make sense? So I want to put all those opportunities or 
or possibilities out there, I should say, because if you're, God has you in a season of fasting and repenting and sackcloth and ashes, it would be against God for me to say, you should be in a ball ground and three piece suit. You see what I'm saying? The point is this, always go to God to confirm because God knows where you're at and why he has you there. And if you simply ask God, like, what season do you have me in? Because I'm a little confused, um, not confused spirit, so to speak, but confused because this is new to me. I'm not understanding what to expect. Then God will show you and reveal to you. Amen. Amen. At least he did to me. So if God did it for me. He can do it for you too in Jesus name. All right. So a Torah reading. Um, the blue stone. So verses 39 and 40, God went over with us about um, the pomegranates and the holy garments of the Levitical priests and who was called to wear them. Amen. All right. So let's continue about how uh, now being all on the same spiritual level, everyone, Hebrew, Christians and strangers, amen, new to the faith, we are all um, ordered by God to put garments on that help us to remember the commandments of our Father who is in heaven. Now, should we all still be wearing tassels? I don't know. Let's ask God. But I do believe at the very least, we should be dressing appropriate to be in the presence of God at any moment, which if you're a Christian, it should be all moments. Amen and amen. All right. Numbers chapter 15, verse 37. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes upon the borders of their garment throughout their generations. Throughout their generations. Amen. I don't see forever yet, do I? No. But I do see throughout their generations. So could that mean still till now? I don't know. Let's ask God. And put upon the fringes of the border of the ribbon of the blue silk. Now, this blue silk, remember, some believe it, it was made blue by the blood of a unicorn. Some believe it was a mystical oyster. Some believe it was a mystical octopus. Um, so there's a lot of... Um, mystic or uh, theories or uh how do you say it i will say this remember that chemistry book that god led us to a while ago and it talked about how in ancient biblical times even in the roman era they used to make dyes and silk i want to say this for the record in that book it quotes all these jewish folklore saying that the blue silk dye came from the blood of a unicorn, a mystical uh, seashell kind of thing, or an octopus. I promise you I have that science book and it says the exact same thing and even gives pictures of how they used to dye this in a chemistry book. And this is why it's best to get books older than 1960. Because I love older books. You can't get them out of these new books where they take the knowledge out of because they don't want us to know who we are and who we serve and that unicorns are real. Amen. They don't want us to know how God, the creator of the universe, put all things here for our use and we're still supposed to be doing them. They try to keep this wisdom and knowledge from God's people. I'm just putting it out there. And ye shall have the fringes that when ye look upon them, ye may remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them and ye seek not after your own heart nor after your own eyes after which ye go a whoring yes a whoring the way god sees it is when we hearken on to the voice of our fleshy sinful heart if that's what we have or our fleshy sinful eyes God considers it a whoring. Why? Because we are his bride. And if we go and serve other gods, we are committing idolatry. We are whoring, meaning leaking up, soul knitting, soul tying unto evil, demonic spirits, devils, and Satan and Lucifer, which we rebuking Yeshua's great name. I know somewhere out there they don't want to believe that's the way it is seen in the spiritual realm. 
but God says it right here and he says it several times throughout the word of the Bible, his word, that when we yoke, which we shouldn't, if we, those who do, I'll say it that way, those who yoke on to evil demonic spirits, it is considered harlotry because there is an exchanging of spirits. Amen and amen. All right. That ye may remember and do all the commandments and be holy unto your God. Amen. The great I am. I am, hallelujah, your God, the Lord, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and be your to be your God. I am the Lord, your God. I do not change. So below I found a link I thought was kind of cute. It was a nice little video. No, I'm not paid to endorse nor am I affiliated, but this woman on the video which was just the cutest little video it's very short i think it's like 10 minutes long maybe um she gives a small little class and on how to create our own tassels so those who maybe you feel god is leading you in this and he wants you to put tassels on some of your garments maybe some garments you wear to church or some garments that you consider God has revealed to you as your festival garments. I don't know, wherever, wherever our Father in Heaven is leading you. Um, these are how you can make them. Recently, I will share this. A couple, one or two years ago, when God called me to start wearing more shawls and uh, coverings of shawls, God directed me, led me to the ones with tassels and knots on them. I will say that. Most recently, I feel like our Father in Heaven has been telling me, all right, now I want you to start making tassels. And I thought that was interesting because later when this class came about, because God, I felt God was showing me this probably about three or four months ago. So I was like, I don't know how to do that, Lord. I need to learn, you know? So this is when I started making my own skirts and stuff like that because God has been pulling me into that as well. And... I feel God is saying for me to start making tassels. Now, I don't know if he wants me to put them at around my shawls because I wear shawls and I have some that don't have tassels on it. Or if God's like, you know, later I'm going to give you skirts and stuff or dresses and I want you to put them at the bottom of your dresses. I don't know. I don't know. But all I know is I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy <laughs> um, these threads and I'm going to start making tassels. And... I'm going to have them prepared for when God says, all right, put them on this garment or put them on that garment. I'll have them ready. It is an act of obedience to our father. It is a kind of a sacrifice of time. It is, for lack of better words, walking in faith, a leap of faith. It's me trusting in where I feel the Holy Spirit is leading me. So if this is maybe you too, or you're not there yet, I, if you ever will be, I don't know. That's up to Jesus. Amen. But anyhow, here's a cute video that might show you the way. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. The fringes on the bottom of garments were previously only reserved for or worn on those of the priests of the tabernacle's garments. But now, heading into a prophetic cause for all beings in the body of Christ, us all being priests through Christ, amen, we are all, we are all eligible through our Jesus to wear tassels on the bottom of our garments to remind us to follow the laws of our Father who is in heaven, amen and amen. Now, next, I'm going to go through the spiritual teaching of the Torah to avoid redundancy. I won't go through every single verse, only over a couple of the verses that the Lord our God had led us to. And honestly, this is this spiritual teaching is probably the shortest spiritual teaching that we have ever had on this Bible study. So probably... Um, 10 more minutes and then we'll be done. We do have a Torah reading, a half Torah for Shelach, Joshua chapter 2 to read after this. Amen and amen. All right. 
Father God, thank you for directing us and giving us your spiritual wisdom for your honor and your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. Verses 1 through 16. A new law is introduced. Certain offerings must be accompanied by gifts of meal offering and wine liberations. This law is a seasonal law that was voided after the 39 years later meaning once they were leaving um the wandering in the desert they were no longer required to make this offering this law was for the younger generations to know they have been saved through through salvation growth years oh sorry through salvation and it draweth near offering there were elevations offerings are completely burnt up. All are given to the great I am. Feast offerings are eaten and shared and celebrated to celebrate Hasiam and everything he has done for somebody like um, a successful birth, right? That the mother, we gave this example in the other Bible study, that the mother and the baby um, that the birth process was successful and both the mother and the baby made it. You know, that's an example of a, a feast offering or a celebration offering. A peace or gratitude or thankful offering. This was shared with oneself, one's family, and the whole congregation, as many that it could provide for because it was thanking God for not only saving the individual, and the individual's family, but the whole tribe and whole nation of that congregation. Verses 32 through 36, the Sabbath desecration. God views these, those who, excuse me, God views those who deny the Sabbath and observing of, deny God Christ as the creator of the universe. Therefore, they are blaspheming and idolaters worthy of death. Verse 33. The man breaking the Sabbath was warned of his sin and continued in it. Thus, someone who was willfully sinning, and that's why all the verses before that, God gave examples for those who accidentally sin and are born of the tribes, those who accidentally sin and are not born of the tribes, and those who accidentally sin and are new converts to the tribes. Amen and amen in Jesus' name. All right, so let's read our Hoff. Let me find the word. <laughs> I'm going to probably say it incorrectly anyway, so I apologize. But the Haftar Ra for Shalak. I pray I said that halfway right. Joshua chapter 2. Amen. Praise God. Oh, You're so merciful, Father. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent two men out of Shittim to spy secretly, saying, Go and see the land of Jericho. And they went and came to the house of an innkeeper named Rahab. And they lay there. And it was told to the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come here this night from the children of Israel to search the land. And the king of Jericho went the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men who have come to you ha, that have entered your house, for they have come to search out the entire land. Now the woman had taken the two men and had hidden them, and she said, Indeed, men came to me, but I did not know from where they were. It was time to close the gates at darkness that the men went out, and I did not know where they went. Pursue after them quickly, for they, for you will overtake them. And she had brought them up to the roof and hid them with the stalks of the flax and had laid an arrange upon the roof. And the men pursued them in the direction of the Jordan to the fords, and as soon as the pursuers had gone out, they shut the gate. And before they could, and before they were asleep, she came unto them upon the roof, and she said to the men, "I know that the Lord has given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land have melted away because of you." 
For you, for we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of the Jordan, Shehan and Og, whom you completely destroyed. And as soon as we heard, our hearts melted, nor did they remain any more spirit with any man because of you. For the Lord our God is God in heaven above, on the earth and below. Now I pray, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you will also show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token. And you shall preserve alive my father and my mother and my brothers and my sisters and all they have, that you shall deliver our lives from death. And the man answered her, Our life for yours. If you will not tell this, our discussion, and shall make it be when the Lord gives us the land, that we will deal with you with kindness and with truth. And she let them down by the rope through the window, for her house was in the town wall, and she dwelt in the wall. And she said to them, Go to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there for three days, until the pursuers return, and afterwards you will go your way. And the men said to her, We will be blameless of this, your oath, which you made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, you shall bind, bind this line of scarlet thread, in the window of which you let us down and you shall bring your father and your mother and your brothers and your father's household home to you and it shall be that whoever shall go out of the doors of your house outside his blood shall be upon his head and he will be blameless and whosoever shall be with you in the house his blood shall be upon our head if any hand be upon him and if you tell this discussion, then we will be blameless of your oath, which you have made us swear. And she said, according to your words, so be it. Hallelujah. <laughs> and she sent them away and they departed. And she bound the scarlet line to the window. And they went and came to the mountain and stayed there three days until the pursuers returned and the pursuers sought them throughout the way, but they did not find them. And the two men returned and descended from the mountain and crossed over and came to Joshua, son of Nun, and told them all that had happened. And they said to Joshua, For the Lord has delivered into our hands all the land, and also all the inhabitants of the country have melted away because of us. Amen and amen. Praise God. I had to kind of laugh in a beautiful acknowledging God way. I heard so many <laughs> I heard so many reflections of what happened during the first Passover. Did you all hear it? How the spies said God saying to remain in the house, those who remain in the house shall be safe, but those who go outside the house, their blood will be upon them. I also heard a reflection of what happened just previously when the spies went in the land, but 10 came back bearing false witness, but only two told the truth because only two, Joshua and Caleb, actually went throughout the land. But I also heard another one, which I wasn't expecting. And I thought it was funny. Um, it's been a while since I reviewed the story. But does anyone remember of the story of the harlot that was sitting outside their tabernacle? And then her father-in-law came and he didn't know it was his daughter-in-law. And all her husbands had died before her and she didn't have an heir. And he promised her the youngest son to marry. And and he reneged on the promise. So she's like, I'm going to go meet him because the whores hang outside the tabernacle and, and he's going to think I'm a prostitute. And that happened and he gave her a token, right? I think it was like a goat or something. And uh, he went into her and she became pregnant with twins. And later he accused her of being a harlot and 
gave him the token showing it was him and he was like oh man this harlot this woman who i thought was a harlot was really my daughter-in-law and she was more righteous than me <laughs> i know that sounds so funny but i just heard all those in that chapter right there because many believe that rahab was a harlot right and if she wasn't a harlot she was at least a madam you know a, a what is it? The woman who owns the harlot house, but she isn't harloting herself, right? Anyhow, you are your work, and Jesus says it. All right, children of God, I pray everyone got something out of this Bible study. That was an awkward note to leave it on, huh? <laughs> oh, Marie, we all love Jesus. Amen. All right, let's end this Bible study with a prayer in Jesus' name. Um, it is almost midnight not too far i pray others in jesus name take this opportunity to repent write their love letter to god go over their prayers and their dreams or their wishes or their goals or their vision write it plain and make it clear and deliver it unto the lord do your repenting. Don't bring any of that sorrow and hurt and pain into the near year. Just give it all to the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Cancel any hexes, any curses, any vexes, any sins in Jesus' name before the, the new year starts. Just let it all go and give it all over to God. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, in the blessed name of our Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our wonderful, merciful Lord and Savior, thank you for us being able to have a closing year Bible study with you, Lord. Lord, you make everything perfect and in perfect timing, Father God. We just pray that we are just more patient, humbling, and giving to truly turn everything over to you and truly trust you in your will and your mission for our life and your vision for our life, hallelujah, and your thoughts towards us, God. We pray that we grow more and more in you and we grow in our spiritual level with you, Lord. Let us not be like the regular congregation or the lukewarm Christians or the cold Christians, Lord. We want to raise ourselves spiritually to be closer to you, not for, not for any so-called honor of this world but to make you proud, God, so that you will look at us and say, what a good and faithful servant, hallelujah. That is my son and my daughter in whom I am well pleased. Look at them. They follow their savior. They do their best. They try to be like the only one that is above of all names, Jesus. They try to love like our Jesus. They try to teach their best as they can of our Jesus. They go out trying to heal the sick, amen. Healing, taking care of the poor, taking care of the widow. They do everything to the best of their little humanly possibility to be like our beautiful Jesus, the savior of the world. Look at my children. God, we want to do great and glorious things for your honor and your glory alone, not for applause, not for any payment that we will receive on earth, no. But the true, true everlasting payment, the true glory that can only come from you, Lord, in your beautiful mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for the abundance of rain showering down from the heavens, opening up from the windows, just pouring out on us, your saints. Thank you for washing us clean. Thank you for healing and restoring us. Thank you that promises have not come to pass too soon or they would have been curses. Thank you for accepting our repentance for, for being whiny, crying little children sometimes, right, Lord? <laughs> oh, us impatient little humans, God. But we see your honor. We see your glory. And we see the promised land that we could just reach out and touch because we know that we serve a good and faithful God. 
we know you have and will bring all things come to pass Lord because you are faithful you are honest you are good hallelujah and we just give you all the honor all the praise and all the glory amen for our God lives our God reigns our God is supreme our God is the God of gods our Lord is the King of Kings amen every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is and has been and will always be Lord amen hallelujah <laughs> praise God praise God praise God amen oh father I love you as always we pray for our nation we pray for our president Donald J Trump we pray for all nations who know that their Lord is King amen and Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world we pray for everyone within the body of Christ, all the prophets, all the seers, all the saints, all the healers, <laughs> amen, all the caster outers, all the missionaries, amen, all the children's missionaries, all those who play the strings and the harps and the lyres, amen, wherever you are in the body of Christ, the volunteers, amen, and the servants, hallelujah. Wherever you are in the body of Christ, may God continue to watch over you. May God continue to answer your prayers before you even finish speaking them. May God continue to show his presence in your life. May God continue to shower blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon you and your generation so much so that your cup overfloweth, amen, and blesses the house next door to you and the nation next door to you. May God continue to anoint you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. May we all be <laughs> washed in the blessed blood of our blessed Lamb, who is Yeshua, Jesus our Christ. Amen and amen. We pray this all in the mighty name of our Yeshua HaMashiach, Emmanuel, for God is always with us filled with the holy spirit the ruha kaddish and sealed with the blood of christ amen praise the living god huh yeshua <laughs> oh i love our lord all right till next time meaning most likely next sabbath <laughs> may god keep you may god bless you may god's face always shine upon you may god be gracious and merciful towards you may god ensure that you always receive his peace shalom till next time children of the most high ever loving living god may we all be forever written in the book of life Amen and amen.
Unto your name, be unto your name.